Welcome back. It's been a while. Uh, it's me, Dalen, with these Roma guys. Mike's in the corner over there. And today we're here with the Deco Collective, um, two of our friends uh, who are working on a collective initiative which focuses on Deco's and other cultural items and basically is a way to empower Roma people to be proud of their identity and really um, share their identity with the world. So we want to spend some time chatting with them today. At the end of this, we want you to go out and we want you to check out their Deco Collective. We want you to send some donations their way and really support other Roma um, and their path forward. So let's start uh, today with some questions just to get to know who these people are on the screen with us. Um, my name is Naomi um, and I live in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and I have a master's degree in public administration and I work in New York City government. I previously worked for um, New York City Council Member Jumani Williams, who is now the public advocate of New York City. And um, my day job is I work in communications. And Lola? Um, so my name's Lolo or Lois, and oh, I'm from the UK. Oh, it's all right. Whatever you want to call me, as long as it's like, you know, all right, it's fine, you know. Um, I didn't want to give you just an open pass. Like yeah, I was like, I don't want to give you an open pass. Just call me what you want. You know, I have feelings, but, you know, Lolo, Lois, that's all right. Um, yeah, um, from the UK, um, I'm in Budapest right now in Hungary. Um, and I was a waitress, uh, like working in a nightclub slash restaurant that all operated at the same time. Yeah, and I was at university though, I was studying politics. Um, and yeah, so I guess that's me. Like I was just a waitress who worked from, who worked like 12 hour shifts at night. This is Lola <laughs> the second. Funny story about Lola, while well, she's being a little really warm right now, but um, she's from the Ukraine. And she already came with the name Lolo. So I didn't name her after Lolo. How it kind of started was I was sending Lolo like all the supplies that I was getting to like make ribbons for myself just in quarantine. I was like bored. Um, and then Lois is like, oh, I'm going to also do that. And then I think she was so bored that she was like, oh, I'm going to ask other people in the community if they want them, and then I'll send them to them. Yeah, I mean, it started out with just the ribbons, and then um, it, it launched, like, technically on Romany Resistance Day this year, um, May the 16th. And it was all about supplying um, community members with hair ribbons, clothes, things like that. Um, it was essentially just because we both noticed that a lot of funding for Roma activism or organisations tends to end up going into educating majority white, what I would call gorgeous society, and doesn't actually go into like community healing and individual Romani people in just kind of going right. into like just care. It started as like our own conversations around like activism and um you know representation of Roma people and you know what kind of organizations we have and we you know thought it would be something to more show like a celebration of culture um and like embracing identity rather than, you know, rightfully so, the oppression of Roma people. But we don't talk a lot about, um, you know, so many of like the beautiful things of the culture and like celebration and embracing identity and those type of things. So what kind of conversations are you hoping to spark up with uh, this project? I mean, for me, it's like, it's about intersectionality. It's about, okay, there's culture, but there's also this aspect of accessibility and working class identity, you know? A lot of Romani people don't have access to general self-care items or aspects of culture because it's essentially been stolen by majority white society 
who have decided that any visible markers of, of being Romani has become a danger for Romani people to express. That's something that we're trying to unpick. We're trying to say that we'll help in that process, but we won't just say it to Romani people, like, like ourselves, we'll actually give parcels with the items in to be able to do so. It's all about just making it accessible and just saying like, listen, if you can't afford it, don't worry about it, we'll get it covered. This isn't saying the Diclo Collective can make it all better. It's just saying that we can give you something that's entirely for you, that's made by the community for the community, and literally couldn't care less what gorgy folk think about Romani people. It's not about them. Is, is that sort of like the point of it? Like, like not being ashamed of your identity and being able to uh, wear it with pride, knowing that it's made by your community? <laughs> I would definitely say that's one aspect of it. And the second aspect of it, um, Lois also touched on was just that, you know, these items are taken by mainstream society and um, people like shapeshift them into things that are not actually our culture, but using like, like words and uh, like imagery that's associated with our culture for mainstream society, but not for us to profit off of. Meanwhile, um, you know, these type of items can be inaccessible to people in the community or difficult to, to um, you know, keep your resources within the community as well. So I'm wondering where you think this project can go in the future. You know, like where we want it to grow is we just want to have more items more things that we can give to people like both me and Naomi are very creative young women like we're very creative and we have a lot that we want to give and something that I think I really want to put across is that this is also a safe space for activists as well like this whole project serves a purpose of saying that you know both me and Naomi have been involved in activism for a while where it's been very toxic in terms of how general society can treat you and I think what this project in future is is it's a safe space for activists to say like well listen like we're not going to do that anymore like we're not going to put ourselves on the line to sacrifice sacrifice our emotional well-being for majority society's benefit to be their um their object to project their anti-gypsyism and anti romany attitudes onto so i think like as this grows it's not just going to be me and naomi that's a part of this it's going to be everyone it's why we always say when we give out parcels like you're part of the Diplo Collective community because you have accessed items from it and you're part of it. You know, we say it's co-owned by me and Naomi, but everyone who donates and everyone who gets a parcel is part of that collective community because we don't make profit from it. We're just two people trying to do something. Like in terms of collaborations, like another thing that me and Naomi are really trying to do, release like collaboration regarding different POC or people of color, um groups um so for example we're trying to raise awareness of like um with of like afro romani creators um things like that like things that people don't even discuss like there's so many intersections of identity within romani communities or wider grt which is gypsy Roma traveler communities that isn't discussed because society can only view us through through one lens of diversity the moment we occupy more than one thing it's almost too confusing because we're seeing it through this lens of like, if you're diverse, you can only be that one diverse thing. It's too much for Karens to like understand. But like, <laughs> but like in reality, you have people who are um, Roma and Native American, people who are black and Roma. You have people from all kinds of intersections of society um, that just aren't represented, heard about or discussed, especially on topics surrounding colorism. Um, and how that impacts Romani communities and intersectional Romani communities. The second thing is we also want to promote like other Roma artists so we and other Roma businesses as well so we include a lot of that stuff in like our packaging so we'll include we'll have like a rotation of different like Roma artists who we've you know paid to like have access to have put their prints within our parcels to send out to people um or like do like buy from Romani businesses to have giveaways or just to put like special little things that we buy from other uh, Roma businesses in the packages out to people. But was there like a moment that you guys, I mean, there must have been something that, that clicked, right? Where you weren't just bored in COVID making stuff and then I'm like, oh, I'm just going to give this away. 
right? So there was there a moment that kind of was like, hey, we should we should really do this. It's kind of a funny story, really, because as much as like it wasn't like it was kind of it was kind of initially just like um, I saw Naomi making ribbons, and then I just start. I was on like um, the Piran Mensa youth video thing, and I just said, if anyone wants a Diplo or like a ribbon, just let me know, and I'll make it. And then like. Naomi like messaged me and was like oh I could do this like making infographics and I'm not saying that Naomi wormed herself in but like it was kind of just like there was no like formal conversation it just kind of happened but then for some reason we just started having like meetings where Naomi was just there and then we're like oh yeah so we've kind of like made this project that's interesting with a, a couple of hundred orders. How many uh, have you guys uh, sent out so far? Like, are you ramping up more every month? Or is it like, uh, what's we've actually had to like put, right now? We've actually had to put a pause on our ordering because it was taking off too much. I think we've shipped out like a hundred. Yeah. And so far it's been just giving them away? Or has it been like maybe selling some of them to make up, you know, to be able to give some more away. Like, have you adopted that type of model? Are you actually selling some or just giving them away? What we kind of operate on is that we don't ask for costs from Romani people at all. All wider GRT, like it's open to all, anyone who identifies as Gypsy Roma Traveler. Um, and like, we just leave our PayPal in the bio and we just say to people like, if you can, just drop whatever you can. We don't check on it, so it's up to you to decide whether you want to pay for anything. Um, all we ask is if people can pay postage, that they do. Um, but we also have a system with that where, like, if they can't pay the full postage, they just pay what they can. Or if they can't pay anything, they don't have to pay the postage or the items at all. Um, but other people can have the option to pay money forward in their donation. I guess my final question for you uh, guys would be, um, what haven't we talked about that? Like before we started this, uh, you know, this video, uh, is there any subject that you were hoping to talk about that we didn't get to brush up on? We didn't really get to go over? I think what's important about the collective is that, for example, like I'm LGBT, I'm a lesbian. So like what I think is really important about this collective is that it shows that cultural heritage and traditional elements of um, Romani identity can be upheld by LGBT people in our society. Because um, I think there's a common misconception that like the nature of being LGBT in Romani is being gorgified or like, you know, not being Romani enough. And I think that breaking down that barrier comes with realizing that like cultural heritage and maintenance of history can come from all walks of life in the Romani community. I think that's something the Diclo Collective represents. Is a like, you know, it's, you know, partially queer owned. So, you know, can't escape it. Can't escape the gay. So, cause I'm there. So. That's what's so uh, beautiful about us getting to do videos like this. And that was our main objective is to try to show that Roma, you can be from any walk of life, whether it comes to your job, like Naomi was saying, like it's not that uh, only like highlighting the professional jobs, but because they're not like, it's such a myth around that they don't exist. I do think it's important to highlight because the stereotypes are being highlighted every day on the news all over Europe, right? Like the bad parts mm -hmm. and the, uh, you know, the poverty and the, uh, all of that is being shown all day. So it's nice that, yes, we're all trying to help that part too. And, uh, you know, trying to get our people out of poverty. But, but we have to use people uh, from all walks of life to inspire. Something I really want to point out, I think it's very strong to me in Naomi's core, is that, you know, um, what I like about the collective is that almost it's kind of faceless. I think there's a big problem in politics and political activism where it has to be, someone has to be the face of a movement someone has to be the bringer of change. And it's like, well, no, like, you know, it isn't a person that changes the movement, it's a collective, ide it's collective ideas. Um, I think that's something that's important as well, is that we're not marketing the collective as, oh, it's the Lois and Naomi show, come watch. Like, you know, well, maybe a little bit, but you know, <laughs> like, like, like not a lot, yeah, I think but you know. People want to know like the human aspect to it. Yeah. Like, who we are, yeah. and, uh, like our personal lives, not in like an elevated sense. It's just about us wanting to do the work and like making beautiful things for other people and like caring about our community. Mm -hmm. 
legit. Like every single Romany person is the Martin Luther King of the of the Romany movement because we're all the collective movement of change. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we want to thank our guests. Uh, they've been wonderful. Please check out uh, the links that we have attached to this video. Check out the Deco Collective. Again, really support the people out there that are making positive difference, especially for GRT communities across the world. Um, and if you are a GRT person and you want to get involved, again, check them out. Uh, if you want to receive a Deco, contact them. Right now, they're so backed up because they have so many orders because they're doing great. So we want to make sure that uh, put your name on that list and donate if you can uh, and help out our friends at the Deco Collective. And as always, make sure you check out more of our videos coming up soon from these Roma guys. Uh, and hopefully, when COVID is over with, you will be back together doing green screen magic for uh, the ages. Thanks again. If you're a gorger, you know, time for reparations. Drop some money, make up yeah. for everything else. Go on, drop some money, drop some cash. Yeah, you know, do, don't do your bit, to be honest. <laughs>See, now they're seeing the inside. This is usually what happens. Uh, well, just so you know, plus, Mike's, I had role, Mike's lighting role, this whole time. Yeah. Mike's role during not, this whole thing, even when we're in person, is he's the critique.